The endpoint detection and response industry is valued at more than four and a half billion US dollars in 2024, and this is expected to reach more than 13 billion US dollars by 2029. Despite EDR tools being so prevalent in the security community, only a fraction of security professionals actually understand how they function under the hood. So I decided to take a look at a dumb EDR solution and see if it could be bypassed. A couple of weeks ago, Eurelian from the Orange Cyber Defense team created a post about building a dumb EDR solution as they began to learn more about endpoint detection and response products. Now, this EDR solution has a few vulnerabilities in it that if you exploit, will allow you to bypass the EDR's components. And that's the aim of the game today. I do recommend you read this post because it's fantastic, but I'm going to jump in and try to bypass this particular EDR solution. Okay, so I've gone ahead and downloaded a copy of my dumb EDR. And what I'm gonna to try to do is compile it and then install it on my system, see how it works and then try to bypass it. So I've got Visual Studio open and what I can see is that the project has a few different components to it. So there is a DLL, there is a driver, there is a remote injector, probably for the DLL, there is a static analyzer, and then there is this shellcode inject code that actually has the flag that we're looking for. So straight up, I'm going to compile this. I'm going to build the project as a release, sure. And I'll do it as debug as well, just to see if there's any kind of differences between the two. Okay, so we've got debug and release here that successfully compiled. Under the debug, there is pretty much every single component of it, as well as the PDB, the debug components to this particular application. And if we look in the release, something that's a little bit interesting, there is this name of silentstrike.dll. Now this is the name that gets applied when you are producing it as a release as opposed to the debug. So it looks like maybe there is a particular product that the person was creating who did this blog post and they reused components of the particular DLL and then failed to rename it for the release component of it. So the project name still had the name Silent Strike as opposed to my dumb EDR DLL, but that's fine. Let's jump right into the particular components of this EDR tool and how we might be able to bypass it. So first off, if we look at the my dumb EDR DLL and we look at the DLL main C++ file, you can see that it is using a particular class that's known as minhook. And this is actually used for hooking a particular API call so that instead of it being run directly from the NT DLL DLL, it's going to be run from a method inside of this particular DLL instead. And if those conditions pass, then it's going to be redirected to the legitimate NT DLL API call. So that's a little bit interesting. This hook is taking place in order to essentially prevent you from using something like NT allocate virtual memory. And we can see this being defined here. So there is a type definition that gets used. Then there is this check that takes place here. So if you are allocating protections as page execute read write, which seldom ever happens normally in an environment unless you are trying to inject into a process. Most processes have read memory permissions or they have write memory permissions or they have read write or they have execute, but rarely ever do they have all three of read write and execute. You can see that if you fail, you get this dude, are you trying to read write execute me? Found you bro. And then that's it. And we can kind of confirm that by firing up this particular EDR tool, but let's jump into a few more components first. So there is the dumb EDR driver. Now this has a particular installation int file in order to specify how the driver is being set up on the system. The driver.c is the actual file that's being used here. And there's a few different components to it. Some of the main components are that it will create this device name and symbolic link that allows it to communicate with that device name. And that's to successfully allow user land components to talk to kernel space, to talk to the kernel level components. So if we go down and look, there is a named pipe that gets used. And this is what's being used to send the outcome of particular analysis 
back to the kernel driver itself. So if something was to analyze a particular file and come back and say, oh, this is malicious, then the kernel component gets notified of that to be on the same page and prevent it from loading. So looking down, there is a number of named pipes that get created. There is a lot of debug statements and this is very well maintained code in that it is very well commented. Pretty much every single line is commented as well as overarching comments for the code itself. But there's a lot of different components to it. And if we begin to look down, we can find a few things of interest. So for example, there is this remote injector unreachable allowing. So it seems like this actually uses a fail safe as opposed to a fail secure component to it, which means that if it's not able to find the remote injector, it just says this is clean, let it run, as opposed to this is bad, block it, because otherwise that could lead to system crashes, blue screens of deaths, and all kinds of issues. The key component of this driver is the create process notify routine. And what this is doing is saying every time a process is started, we are going to notify this driver that it has been started and provide the information to the driver itself. Now that driver can then take that information and do whatever it likes with it. So in this particular case, it looks like it's getting the process ID of that particular process that is now being launched. It's getting kind of the memory address locations, getting the command line, and it looks like it's comparing the command line to see if it contains shellcode inject.exe. And then it also looks like it's checking if it contains the command line of notepad.exe. So maybe that is essentially saying if you are trying to inject into notepad, just send back that this is a denied command line, this is not allowed, and it is going to be prevented. And it looks like there's a few other components such as sending to the injector, allowing stuff, and basically these are all just debug messages that have been put in there, and then the actual component of it is this create info creation status to say whether it is denied or successful. And then it looks like if it gets denied, whether it, that is the process starting or the static analyzer that says, no, this isn't allowed to run, then it's going to kill the process. So there is this process killed that is being noted here and so it looks like there's a noted logical bug so if the agent is not running the drive will always allow the creation of the process okay so we've got something that we can target here in order to allow us to bypass this particular tool but let's go down further so there is this unloading routine that gets called in order to prevent those callbacks from being still established and probably the yep device drivers themselves and the symbolic link to it. Then we've got the particular driver entry. So this is what happens when the driver is loaded. And yeah, basically looks like it's just launching it from there. So that is kind of the crux of the EDR driver. Now, if we look at the remote injector, we're gonna come down to the source file and take a look at this. So this is using once again named pipes in order to transmit information between these particular processes. It looks like it's getting the my dumb EDL ED, sorry, no, no, DL, no, no, no. my dumb EDR DLL that is being compiled. So if we did this as a release, it wouldn't work because it is hard coded into this x64 debug and that particular DLL directory. So a little bit interesting, something to keep in mind. But basically, it looks like it is injecting into any process that is allowed to start or when processes do start due to that notify routine, it launches this and injects a DLL into those particular processes. And that's to allow that hook to occur that we saw earlier so that it's able to hook the APIs in those particular processes. So maybe they're allowed to run, but if they try to do something they shouldn't be able to do, like abuse a particular API, then maybe they get killed as a result. So let's go down further. There is named pipes once again. They're all over the shop. So it is getting a handle to the particular process in question. And it's looking at the load library function for it. So this is probably to do with actually loading this particular DLL, allocating the bytes of it. 
and it's as you would expect, this is used to inject that particular DLL into a process memory. So now there's two other components, the static analyzer and shellcode inject. So I'm gonna look at the static analyzer, but not shellcode inject in this particular case. So if we look at the static analyzer, we can begin to get a bit more of an idea of what might be taking place here. So once again, there's some stuff noted, the vulnerabilities. So this function will check if the binary is signed, but there is a logical bug that means that if the binary is signed, whether or not the signature is valid, it's going to be allowed. So you could have invalid signature and that's fine as long as it's signed, the binary will be allowed to run. And so let's take a little bit more of a look at this. Okay, so in this particular component, it looks like it's parsing the import address table of a particular binary in order to look at the DLLs that have been loaded and then see what functions are being used. So if something like open process, virtual alloc, egg, write process, memory and create re remote thread, then it's going to be essentially saying, no, this, this isn't allowed. I'm going to terminate that process because it looks like it's doing something suspicious. So there's a number of variables that get defined and basically just being used to determine if those particular API calls have been loaded. So it looks like you can, once again, we have a vulnerability here. So if we can hide our import address table, so it's not able to find this information, then we're gonna bypass this check. So maybe we are not actually having these imported, but we are dynamically loading them once the binary executes, we're gonna bypass these particular checks. But let's go down a little bit further, see what else we've got. Okay, so it's also looking for the SE debug privilege string inside the binary. So this kind of just seems like it is a plain text string that's being looked at. So if you're able to strip that or obfuscate it in some way, shape or form, then it looks like we're going to pass this particular check as well. Kind of seems like this is the static analyzer components of it, right? There's no machine learning going on. There's nothing overly complicated. All it's doing is performing these static based checks. And if we go down, we can begin to see it. So while true, so, so long as this is actually running, it looks like it's connecting to the particular named pipes or that's being defined. And then it's essentially reading the data to and from. So we can see found debug privilege string or the string not being found and so on and so forth. So this is basically saying, all right, yep, the static analyzer says it's all good to go or the static analyzer says, no, it's not good to go. Okay, so that's the crux of all of the code of this particular EDR tooling from user land to drivers. So what I wanna do now is see if I can bypass it and see what happens. So first off, I have to install it and there's a batch script that's been created and modified here to allow the drivers to actually be installed. So I've launched it straight up there. It's all done now. It looks like we have the injector with the named pipe server. We've got the analyzer and the named pipe server and we've got the particular driver that has been installed. So this looks like it's successfully running. Yep, my dumb EDR, it's installed, it's running. So are the injector and the analyzer. So let's actually see what we can do with this particular terminal. I'm going to open up uh, an instance of Notepad because we know that this is trying to inject into Notepad. And so I'm going to run the shellcode inject executable. So we're launching remote shellcode injection. We've got our fingers crossed. We're trying to, okay. So it looks like we've been killed here in some way, shape or form. What we were expecting is the calculator to spawn, but instead we got a pop-up saying, dude, are you trying to read, write, execute me? And it's killed. That we, we, we didn't get what we wanted. There was nothing injected. And this this is what we are, we're stuck with, right, okay. So now we have to try and bypass this. But we did learn a few things when we were looking through the code. So. We did know that this fails secure as opposed to failing safe. And that means if this static analyzer isn't running, then we're able to still run it. This is a pretty dumb EDR. So there's no protections protecting that particular process from running. So how about we kill it? Now I'm gonna use my master skills of using task kill. We're gonna force it. We are already running as administrator and we are gonna look for anything with the image file name of shellcode inject.exe. We're gonna just see if we can kill this particular component of the EDR tool. 
Hi everyone, it's Jai here from the future. I just wanted to say I did something stupid here and it took about five minutes to realize what I was doing. So let's just skip past that. Of course we're killed. Silly me, I'm trying to task kill my own shellcode inject executable that's not even running. Let's go back. So I'm going to try to kill not shellcode inject.exe. I'm going to try to kill the actual static analyzer. So my dumb EDR static analyzer. So let's do this now. My dumb EDR static analyzer.exe. Boom. And it looks like that successfully killed. It's terminated. And there's nothing that was protecting that particular process. Cool. So we've killed the user land component of this particular EDR tool. Now let's just see whether we can go back up and run shellcode injection. Hi everyone, it's Jai from the future again. Yeah, I did something stupid by killing the wrong part of the EDR tool. So let's just fast forward the uh, troubleshooting that, shall we? And so the reason why this is still able to run is because my dumb EDR static analyzer is not actually that what is going to be preventing us and not actually where we fail safe. What is, is the remote injector. So let's task kill my dumb EDR remote injector. .exe. And just like that with my late hacking skills, I have killed that component of the EDR tooling now as well. So let's try once again this shellcode injection and fingers crossed this time because it fails safe, we are going to get that. And boom, just like that, we have got our shellcode launched. We have got an instance of calc and we get this congrats, dude. The flag is my dumb EDR, hack the world. Beautiful. Something to keep in mind is that, let's take a look at where that actually occurs. This is actually in the shellcode injection C++ file. So you can see it's trying to do a bunch of different things. Here's the shellcode where calc.exe is trying to be spawned and we have already bypassed this particular dumb EDR in one particular way and there's other tools out there that do things like remove those callbacks that I mentioned by using other vulnerable drivers so in those particular cases there's tools such as EDR Sandblast and Cheeky Blinder that may be of interest and are available on GitHub but all in all we've demonstrated how in this particular case there's no protections on the user land executable so by us being able to tamper with that, it allows us to bypass this particular EDR. Take a look at the project, take a look at the GitHub repository in the blog post to understand more on how this particular EDR tool works and get a bit more of an idea on how Windows internals are functioning behind the scenes with a number of these particular EDR tools. So that's all. Uh, let me know your thoughts, feelings, comments, questions, beliefs, you know, goals for the future in the comments section below and I'll catch you next time.